When we think about modernity, behavioral modernity may be the most relevant, but also the most difficult to define in terms of its significance for thinking about human evolution. If we think about what we do today as a definition of who we are, that becomes complicated. If we were to try and define modern humans as, for example, people who drive around in hybrid vehicles, listening to music on handheld devices, that would put the origins of the genus Homo, or the origins at least of our species, in the last 10 years. Obviously, that's not the case. It's not the specifics of our behavior that necessarily matter, but it's what those specifics represent about our behavioral capabilities. Driving around in cars is just one example of the continuous process of improvements in technology associated with transportation. One of the things that defines us is we move around a lot. When I talk to my parents or my grandparents about the places they've been, I've already been more places in my life than they have ever been in their entire lives, or that they, their parents were, their grandparents were. As a society, we've greatly increased our ability to transport ourselves and to move ourselves across different landscapes. And this is a product of technology. Now let's look at the other elements of that. Listening to music. Listening to music is itself a symbolic element. It's not something functional, it's not something we acquire in order to survive, but it's something we do and we enjoy because we have an emotional connection to it. It's a way of communicating with others and sharing our shared intentions and feelings with other people. It's, in other words, a symbolic act. And when we look at the archaeological record, we can look for traces of symbolic acts, just as we can look for traces of increased locomotor distance, increased movement across the landscape. Now let's continue to look at this. I was listening to music in that example on a handheld device. In other words, a product of the most recent technological developments in terms of how we communicate, how we store information, and how we interact with the world around us. Many of you might be taking this class on a handheld device, looking at this video on a handheld device. Again, an element of how we use technology to interact in a very cultural environment that we occupy. So again, we can look at changes in technology associated with material culture and how those are indicative of the development of modern kinds of behaviors. So stone tools or technology that represent not just increased capacity to interact with the environment, but changing how we interact with the environment. Interacting with the environment in not just functional ways, but in symbolic ways. Ones in which we're suddenly we're seeing evidence, for example, of stone tools or other kinds of material culture, where it's indicative of population-specific differences that don't represent functional differences. It's not because the environment is different, but it's because the population identifies itself differently. And there's population cultural factors influencing the development of stone tools that match a certain specific style. So stylistic boundaries from one population group to another, indicative of this process of symbolic self-identification. The movement of materials across landscapes is to a much greater degree, again indicative of modernity. The development of real symbolic elements, so non-functional material cultural items, things like adornments, shells that have been pierced, that have been used for necklaces, perhaps the use of pigments to dye not just material culture, but perhaps individuals themselves and objects that they were wearing or that places they were occupying. All of these are potentially indicative of modern behavior. But again, the challenge in applying this to the archaeological record is it's not necessarily the specifics that matter. It's what those specifics represent. But what we have in the archaeological record are the specifics. We have the actual materials left and preserved through history. So the challenge is trying to interpret those specifics, trying to understand what the archaeological record is actually telling us about human cognitive capacity, about human social adaptation, about all of these factors that indicate behavioral modernity.